Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. And we start in the first round of the Florida Regional. It's the upstart program in the Clemson Tigers against Iowa State, missing out on a regional last year back in this year. Take a look at the bracket here in the Florida Regional. Clemson and Iowa State competing for a chance at day two in that second session on Friday night, headlined by the host Florida Gators. As we welcome you here inside Exact Tech Arena, that's Stacy Glime, I'm Kyle Crooks. Exciting afternoon as we kick off postseason gymnastics. Clemson, this is their first year as a program. Meanwhile, Iowa State, they wore the last team in with a 36 ranking. A lot of excitement, a lot of nerves for these competitors today. Yeah, congratulations to Iowa State for clenching that last regional play-in spot. They did not make it to regionals last year, and now under new head coach Ashley Miles Grigg, they are back in postseason play. And an extra special congratulations to Clemson in their first ever competitive year. They are at regionals. Earlier this year, they were able to score a 197.6 against Air Force. That is huge in your first ever competitive year. Hedge coach Amy Smith doing great things there. So Clemson under Amy Smith, ACC Coach of the Year, formerly a volunteer assistant, worked with the floor athletes from 03 to 06. Ashley Miles Grieg and Iowa State, they were here a couple weeks ago in Gainesville to finish up the regular season with a quad meet. They don't feel like they performed up to their standard. They had a pretty solid showing in the Big 12 championship. It was enough to stay within the regional field in that 36th ranking. Clemson with the second finish in the ACC. Whoever gets through today, we were talking about this before, it's going to be a grueling three-day stretch. Yes, if you are the top team from this competition, you will go to tomorrow night's second round, 7 p.m. quad meet. Then the top two from that meet will then go to the finals on Sunday. So if you made it out of this one, make it out of the next one. You possibly could be competing three times this weekend. That is a lot on the girls and sort of uh, being strategic about who you put up tonight, knowing that you may have to compete tomorrow and another day. You look at the entire field, we showed it to you off the top. So tomorrow's second round, session one, will be at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can watch all of the events this weekend on ESPN Plus. As you take a look at Amy Smith, formerly with the Florida Gators from 03 to 06, as this is technically her first season with an active program. Of course, she was. it was a program that was training to get to this point last year as they were announced officially as a program in 2021. So hiring Amy Smith away from Utah State, who had a successful five-year run, including a conference championship in her last year there as a head coach. Well, you look ahead tomorrow, Utah, Michigan State, Towson, and Maryland. Session two will be headlined by Florida. You'll have Missouri, Georgia, and the winner of this dual meet in Clemson in Iowa State. You have the top two teams in session one and session two of tomorrow, which will recreate a quad meet for the regional final on Sunday. And those top two teams from that regional final will head to the semifinal in Fort Worth, Texas. Do we got it all? <laughs> We've got it. Okay. And this is a tough regionals. Head, uh, our team here at Florida will have a difficult regionals. To be the top two of each session, there are some amazing teams in this regionals to make it out. How about Ashley Miles Grieg and the job that she's done? It's It's been a rebuilding year in a sense from last year where they missed a regional finish with the 36 national qualifying score, just getting them in the regional field. A, a matchup of two first year head coaches in new destinations former Alabama great and Ashley Miles Grieg, and she's done a great job here as head coach, the eighth in program history at Iowa State. Yeah, and to think she had went on to be in finance and maybe did some ESPN broadcasting, now finally to come back to the love of her sport here as the head coach. She is a four-time NCAA champion. She is skilled. She knows what she's doing. Spent some time in the financial sector. J.P. Morgan Chase, but stayed connected as a choreographer to the sport. Like Stacy mentioned, an ESPN analyst. So you see Amy Smith, last instructions for her Clemson team. This dual meet, deciding who will get that final spot for round two in session two. As we get the postseason kicked off. For Clemson, they will start on the vault. 
Iowa State will start on the uneven bars. It will be Rebecca Wells, the all-around star for Clemson, the fifth-year senior, to get us started here in round one. She performs a Yurchenko full. This is out of a 9.95 start value. That's the highest she can perform for this vault, but if she sticks it, she can get a big score. Sticks that landing. That is a great performance for their first up on vault. That is really going to set the tone for this round. So lead off on vault, her season high 9-9, also a career high. We'll see if she gets close to that here to kick us off. Take a look at the replay. She gets great height off the vault and just nails it, does not move her feet, holds that new one second rule before saluting. Part of the ACC All Championship team on vault. Coming off those ACC championships where Clemson finished second. On even bars, here's Lauren Thomas. She had a great release move, now back down to low bar. She's really gluing those feet together. Good handstand. Just her dismount left with the double layout. Slight hop back, great chest up. That's a great first performance. How much of a deduction for the judges? You know, take me inside the mind of the judges. That slight little hop. What are you we can looking take at up there? to a tenth deduction for a hop. So that's also at the judge's discretion how much they will take for that. Coming off one of her best uneven bars performances at the Big 12 Championships in 9.85. And it's Eve Jackson's turn now for Clemson in this first year program. Transfer, one of the six transfers from Utah State by way of Los Angeles, California. Part of that Team Zero, that practice for a full year and all redshirted uh, to be able to be ready for this season. She too performs a Yurchenko full, only out of a 9.95 start value, but it is high, it is laid out. This is a beautiful ball. Got a chance to go back home, compete against UCLA. Recorded a career high in vault and floor against the Bruins. Of course, that's where Amy Smith starred as a national champion at UCLA, was an All-American there. Has competed all around this year. She goes, that beautiful Yurchenko full. Oh, had to put her knee down. It was so laid out, just needed to get her legs underneath her more, a little more rotation. I think there's something to the nerves a little bit, Stacy, in the first round of an NCAA regional. Maybe that's part of it here. Go back to the uneven bars. Iowa State, Laura Cook. Senior, native of Norwich, England. They actually changed the lineup. It's like Logan Baswell. She's the fifth year senior from California. So we'll be at Baswell from Torrance, California. Nothing like the last second chain. Mounts up to high bar. So high release, beautiful toe point. That's a beautiful Jaeger down to low bar. Squeezes those toe together, that full pirouette to the double back. Fights for that landing. They can take a deduction for that chest down, but she did not move her feet. Like so many of these athletes that have undergone injuries in the past, missed the majority of 2019 with an Achilles tear. Now back to competing. One of the veterans of this Iowa State team just creeping into this regional field with 36 ranking. Third turn at it here for Clemson. Molly Arnold will get a go here on vault. She is powerful. She is a vault and floor specialist. She will perform a Yurchenko one and a half. That is a 10.0 start value. 
Selected as an NCAA individual competitor for vault and floor. Just one last breath before she goes. Yurchenko one and a half. Yeah! Right chest up at the end. Better to do that step forward than step behind. That shows that your rotation is moving forward. Right one and a half. Stacy, take me into the mind of the athlete, especially on vault or any apparatus, before you get into what you're about to do. What are the thoughts going through your mind? Most have a little routine that they do at the end of the vault. You have a certain breath, a certain tap, a certain foot you want to put forward. Um, and so it's just taking that one last breath because the vault is so quick, you just have that one chance to show what you're all about. Get some of the scores as they come in. Rebecca Wells, a 9.825. Eve Jackson, a 9.3. That's for Clemson on vault. As we head back to bars, Ella Shell. Lauren Thomas coming in with the 9.725 and leadoff for Iowa State. for that good handstand. Nice Pike Jaeger, good distance. Stays on track, doing good so far. Nice handstand on high bar, have to be within that 10 degrees and she really stuck it on top, double back. Step forward, but is happy with that routine. Little step forward, so we'll see deduction for that. Lauren Thomas, transfer from Washington, had one of her best uneven bars performances, 9.85 at the Big 12 Championships. Is her top score of the year on bars. Scores will be on the right side of your screen here in rotation one. Lauren Rutherford is next up. Happy birthday, Lauren Rutherford. Today Happy is her birthday. birthday. Junior transfer from NC State. NC State won the ACC championships. She too performs that Yurchenko one and a half, 10.0 start value. Even though higher start value, you have to do it correctly with less deductions. Some people go for the lower start value knowing they could stick a Yurchenko full and get you know, the highest 9.95 out of your Tinko full, but she's going for the full 10.0 difficulty. Large contingent of Clemson fans in the building. There's that your Tinko one and a half. Great vault, great position. Did do, take that hop at the end, but that is a powerful vault. I think you're happy with that. Birthday gift for Lauren Rutherford. Clemson's first ever event winner in program history. The opener against William and Mary on the vault. That little hop to the side, but she has great body awareness and position in the air. You saw the Clemson contingent in the background. Fans making the trip. It's up to Paige Wills. Just a freshman. The freshman looking good so far in her high to low transitions. Good handstand there. Just winding up for the dismount. Big double layout. Great chest up, small hop, but a great performance. Said 9825, three separate times on uneven bars. She Get should you. match that or better. That was right. a great routine. Get you some of the other scores for Iowa State. Lauren Biswell, who moved up to second in the rotation for Iowa State, 9.725. Ella Shell, a 9.7. And now Clemson Madison Minner is next up, the redshirt sophomore.
We'll also have a change in the anchor spot for Clemson. And in vault, Trinity Brown now will go. Here's Madison Minner. Does that tuck your Tinka one and a half? That is also a 10 with Star Valley took that step forward. She is a walk on to this team, and I love seeing her in the vault lineup. A good mix of transfers, players coming from all different parts of the country, a walk on in Madison Minner. That's what you get when you start a brand new program. Amy Smith brought six of her Utah State gymnasts with her to this team, and I think that just shows the love that they had for their coach to be willing to follow her here and sit out for a year. We're going to see great things from them moving forward. Right now, the top score for Clemson on vault, that's Lauren Rutherford with a 9.875. <clears throat> Hannah Loyam. Fifth to go here on uneven bars. Nice, Pike Yeager. Really squeeze those feet together. Oh, has to fight for that handstand. So just a, a break in the ease of the routine and gets an extra kip there. Dismount double layout, small hop. With that extra move there on the low bar, it just makes you a little more tired for the high bar. Hannah actually has a twin sister who competes for Boise State, and they just competed in their regional yesterday. Boise State tied BYU, and in the tiebreaker format, you then count the sixth score, so all the scores counted, and BYU won in the tiebreaker format. So in that case, normally we only count five routines to the score, but in the tiebreaker, all six counted, and BYU inched ahead. One of those Utah State transfers, Trinity Brown. This was a late addition to the anchor for Clemson on vault. It will be Brown, the redshirt sophomore. He's not competed in the previous three meets. Last meet was on March 3rd on vault. That was a quad meet. We'll see what Trinity has being thrown into this last spot. Beautiful, your Chanko full and nails it. Way to come in clutch here at the end. Love the excitement from Trinity Brown in the anchor spot. High fives from her teammates as we take another look. Wow. Well done. Chest up, she knew she had it. See her excitement right in front of us. Last competitor to go for Iowa State, Laura Cook. She was originally slated in the second spot in this lineup. Will be the anchor on bars, native of Norwich, England. Competed at Norfolk Academy. Six years with the English national team. high to low transition. She had the highest score of her team when they were just here at Florida on March 15th on this event. Just the dismount double layout, beautiful. Had to step forward. The rest of her routine was so beautiful. We'll take that deduction chest down, step forward at the end. Just couldn't stick the landing, so one rotation through. A lot of highlights, you see the numbers in the bottom right of your screen. We await the number for Trinity Brown, should be a solid one for Clemson. And we await the numbers for Hannah Loyam and Laura Cook. We'll step aside, get you all the numbers and scores from rotation one as we continue round one of the Florida Regional. Look at Trinity Brown, tied for one of the top scores for Clemson on vault, along with birthday girl Lauren Rutherford. Trinity Webb is leading things off on the bars. And meanwhile, Iowa State will head over to the vault. Kyle Crooks, Stacy Glime, so glad that you can join us here today. The winner of this dual meet will head into session two tomorrow night, round two, 
to join all the rest of the squads in the Florida Regional. Busy weekend here in the sport. Excited that you can join us. Stacey, your thoughts here, one rotation in. Yeah, great start on these first events. Um, Iowa State needed a few more sticks on those landings on bars. Um, Clemson was really looking nice on vault, um, especially with Trinity Brown nailing that last spot. Um, now going into the second event, they're starting to get their nerves out of the way. First event's over. Now they got to kick it into gear. It will be Trinity Webb who's going to lead off for Clemson. Meanwhile, Paige Wills, who had one of the best performances on bars for Iowa State, will be in the leadoff on vault. First time that Gainesville is hosting a regional since 2017. Take a look at bottom right of your screen, the order on vault and bars. A different format from when you competed, Stacy, in terms of how they do all the regionals now. Didn't used to have this play-in dual meet. Exactly. Um, we used to have six inter regionals, and you you competed, and you had by rotations, um, where two teams would sit out and wouldn't compete during a certain rotation. Um, but it's easier to follow for the TV with only two or four competing at one time. So selfishly, it's easier for us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take a look at tomorrow, session one, one o'clock Eastern start, Utah, Michigan State, Towson, and Maryland. Take a look on your screen. The top two of that day session will then head into the regional final on Sunday. The top two in the night session, headlined by Florida, will head to the regional final. A chance for the top two teams on regional final Sunday to head to a semifinal in Fort Worth, Texas. Your thoughts on the overall field and maybe Florida's chances and what you think Jenny Rowland's squad can do maybe to win a national championship this year. Yeah. And like I was saying earlier, this regionals is a tough one. You'll see today, Clemson is doing amazing this year. If they hit, they will get a high score. Um, Michigan State winning their championships are another one to look out for. So that Sunday night is gonna be a tough one. A couple of first year head coaches in new spots. Amy Smith formerly at Utah State, legendary gymnastics career at UCLA. Formerly in Gainesville, as a choreographer working with the floor athletes from 03 to 06. Yep, she was here when I was here helping us with choreography and helping uh, maybe in the summer camps. Um, so great to see her excelling this year. I do want to catch, they have a documentary on their team called uh, Building Legends. Um, and that's on their ClemsonPlus.com and I still need to watch that. It's a, a paid subscription, so maybe Stacey can get the uh, <laughs> free bird. Getting set here for rotation two, so a lot to look forward to. A lot of Clemson fans here in attendance expect this building to fill up tomorrow night when the Gators start to compete, even in session one. Lineups in the bottom right of your screen. And we're ready for our second rotation. In rotation number two, Iowa State. Webb, Jackson, Lippitt, De Guzman, Rutherford, and Wells for Clemson. Will, Shell, Adams, Bergstrom, Parker, and Hom for Iowa State. First up, Paige Wills. She does a Yurchenko pull. Great position, pop back. You'll see a lot of Yurchenko pulls from Iowa State's team. Again, only 9.95 start value. Um, so that will hurt them in the vault that they don't have a lot of 10-0 start values. So a couple of 9.85s on vault. It's Trinity Webb on uneven bars. The freshman, fifth consecutive lineup on bars. Came off of that low bar. She's a bar specialist, so this is the only event um, that she does. 
she she joined the lineup mid-season and really had been a consistent force in this lineup. A late enrollee in January. It's hard to see that on your first up because now you know every routine after this has to hit and it puts a little more pressure on the rest of your teammates. But you still have to finish. You still have to finish, you still have to get a score because in that tie situation, like I was talking about earlier, this score could count. You never know. Double out, high double out, and it sticks that landing. Ah, oh, would have been a beautiful routine. And she really did stick it. Nice bounce back, Trinity Webb. See what the score is after the fall. It takes a lot to get back up there and stick the landing like she did. Ella with your kinko pull and just off to the side. You see her feet out of those lines. The judges will take a deduction for being out of center. So Ella Shell has not competed on vault this year. Scores will appear in the bottom right as they come in. Eve Jackson, transfer from Utah State. One of the bar's event title against NC State. Is that a 9-9 in this event? She comes from an athletic family. Her father, Byron Jackson, and her uncle, Deshaun Jackson, both played for the NFL. Now she's gonna have to wait a little bit longer. She was prepared to go. Now the judges are coming together to converse about the prior score for Paige, or sorry, for Trinity Webb. They're disagreeing on the start value of Trinity's score. I love the nervous yawn that Eve Jackson has. Cause well, we've all had, everybody thinks that that's her saying like, oh, I'm tired, I don't like, Everybody who's ever been nervous about anything, those yawns are all part of it. Well, and she also was already hyped up and ready to go. Yeah. Now now that energy, you kind the of come adrenaline. down a notch. Yeah. Yes. Now now you have to go, well, shoot, do I, do I re-chalk up? Yeah. Um, because you kind of get the perfect mixture on your grips of wet and dry um, to your liking. And if they, if they converse too long, I wonder if she'll walk away here. And so this all goes back to the start value. The start value. Um, some of the judges have Trinity starting out of a 10-0 start value. Some of them have her out of a 9-9 start value. So some of them were not counting the element that she fell on as a skill. And then you lose your bonus. On bars, you start out, the base routine starts out at a 9.4, and within your skills and connections, you have to gain six tenths of bonus throughout the routine to then bring it up to a 10-0 start value. So if they're discounting one of the connections or one of the elements, uh, you start from a lower start value. Iowa State trying to create some energy on their own. On the flip side, they have a long wait on uh, the vault. There's Noelle Adams. She's just pacing around. Yeah, again, trying to keep the legs warm. She's doing cartwheels. She's bouncing around, trying to keep warm on the vault, trying to keep those legs ready. All right, looks like that discussion is over from the judges. Talking to Amy Smith, getting on the same page. 
Looks like Eve Jackson didn't reach chalk up. She's okay. Here she goes. She's ready. Mounts in between the bars. Beautiful legs right at the top. A blind to straddle Jaeger. Woo! Right down to her bail. Just overshot it a little bit, but she hung on. Nice handstand. Pull out dismount. Step forward. Great routine. She had that long wane. I think that threw her off a little bit, but great performance. Considering everything she had to go through before she ever started. Here's that dismount again. The pull out on the second flip. Little step forward. Stays on the bars. Meanwhile, Noelle Adams didn't wait very long to go on vault. As she just finished up. We will have a replay of it. And she's been waiting around for pretty long. She's saying, I'm getting ready to I'm go. Going. <laughs> Here she goes with your Herchenko full and nails it. Look at that, doesn't move those feet, comes together. She is happy with that one after that weight. Might be one of the best faults of the day on either side. Lily Lippitt's turn. Redshirt freshman from Mason, Ohio, the ACC Newcomer of the Year. All ACC in this event on the bars. Last three has competed in bars, floor, and beam. When she got her 9.9 .9 on bars in the first meet of the year, she was the first ever of the Clemson team to get a 9.9. .9. And she's also the first high school signee of the program history. A lot of firsts this year, the first year of program existence. Amy Smith was hired in April of 2022 part of an expansion of the athletics program, which started about five years ago when Clemson added softball, and they got so successful so quick. And gymnastics, sort of the same thing. A great first year for Amy Smith. Love seeing programs add gymnastics. It's, it's an expensive sport. It's a big sport. It has a lot of equipment, so it's a big buy-in for a school to add a whole new Program. It's the 21st varsity sport at Clemson, the 28th sponsored sport by the ACC. They've had big fan turnouts. The first meet that you mentioned against William & Mary had over 8,000 fans in attendance. Yeah, oh. head coach Amy Smith said she has won the jackpot in all of the support that she is receiving from Clemson, from the fans, and she is so grateful to that program. Right, after a long wait, Lily Lippitt, it's her turn on bars. Starts off with this Ray, that single bar release, right down to her pack salt toe. Nice toe point. Fights for that handstand. Full pirouette, brings it together for her double tuck dismount, small hop, great routine. That small hop will have a small deduction, but well done from Lily Lippin. Here she is with that full pirouette, just a little leg separation, but pulls it around for her dismount. Josie Bergstrom. She too does a Yurchenko full, but this, if she hits it, it is beautiful. It is laid out. There she goes, beautiful body position. Great chest up, small hop backwards. Would have liked to see her stick that one. Had the top team vault score against Boise State in 9.925, so one of the best for the Cyclones on this event. Iowa native from Boyden, Iowa. Caitlin de Guzman will go. 
Brad Sr., all ACC on bars. Dual citizen of the United States and the Philippines. She's a bar specialist, so this is the only event she'll be doing today, so she is really gonna wanna show off what she has on this event. Has been in every bars lineup this season. Scores coming in in the bottom right of your screen. Mounts up through the bars. Great toe point. Oh, just glues those toes. Beautiful toe point. Right back down to low bar. Just the dismount left. Double layout. Finally, a stuck landing. Clemson fans, happy about that one. Bar coach, big hugs. That's the way the bar specialist will do it. Stuck indeed. The excitement. Love it. And the excitement only grows here in the Florida Regional. Two teams dueling out to try and head to round two and session two tomorrow night. Kaya Parker. Another Yurchenko full, good body position. High up on the toes. Tries to hold it for that one gymnastics. New rule this year, having to hold for one second before giving the salutes to the judges. Had the best vault score at the Big 12 Championships. Best event is floor. Here's Lauren Rutherford, tied for the best score on vault on her birthday here on bars. She struggled some on bars recently. So hoping here on her birthday, she really hits on this event. Just a nine at the Big 12 Championships. Have to forget that one. And on to the next one. Looks like we have another debate about start value. You know, we've done a lot of quad meets together, Stacy, and usually they can be staggered. The pace is a little off. We were excited about the aspect yeah. of a dual meet, right? Yes, Back we thought and forth. this was going to be a go. little faster. I don't like all this waiting for the Boy, girls. Did we curse that in the <laughs> worst way? We ha now have a second deliberation between judges about a start value. Pay attention to those scores in the bottom right of your screen. We're one rotation in and almost finishing up here in rotation two. Rebecca Wells is left on anchor. Top all around performer. Emily Hong is left for Iowa State. So just two performers left. Still have Lauren, Lauren Rutherford, Rebecca Wells. Looks like the deliberation is done between the judges. So three total performers left here in rotation two. Just the standing and waiting for Lauren Rutherford. And it looked like the judges were ready to salute her. Here we go. All right. Up to high bar. Here's where she's had some trouble, right on that right. Did it again. Three chalk up. So now they have to count a fall. Right. So she still needs 
to finish this strong so they can count this score or they have to count the 9.125 of Trinity Webb. That's why that early fall adds to the pressure of those right behind it. Coming back strong here, good handstand. Double layout. Finishes up, but now they have to count a fall. And what's interesting, in terms of the national qualifying score, this is Clemson's best event on even bars. So they'll take a hit to their score. They'll have one more to go. And that's Rebecca Wells. Emily Hong on anchor. Cyclones on vault to finish up rotation two. She is the lone 10-0 start value. She does a Yurchenko one and a half. There she goes. Had to bend those knees a little bit to pull it around, a little out to the side. Big hugs from her coach. Here she goes again. Just a little knee bend out to the side, but gets that around. From British Columbia, she claims silver on vault the 2019 Canadian Winter Games. And this is a big routine here for Rebecca Wells on bars. Again, one fall is going to have to count for Clemson. You drop the lowest score of the six, and there's been two falls for the Tigers. Rebecca is an AAI award nominee. That's like the Heisman of gymnastics. Uh, a big accomplishment for her. ACC All-Championship team and all-around floor and vault. Individual competitor and in all-around. This year's NCAA. And they're still scoring Lauren. So a little more weight for Rebecca. See, Trinity Webb was the fall. That was to lead off, so that's the lowest score at the moment. And they give the okay here for Rebecca Wells. before her dismount, half in, half out. Great routine, way to come back for the team, Rebecca Wells. And that's what a veteran leader does when you need her the most in that anchor spot and wait for those scores to come in. Great dismount, good height. The all around record holder, and the NCAA championships at Utah State all time. Now you take a look at the scores as they come in. Your thoughts here, we're now two rotations in. Let's see you know, your thoughts in that second rotation. Obviously Clemson competing from behind a little bit after those two falls on bars. Yeah, now with that bar score, that will open up the doors for Iowa State to come back in and catch up to Clemson. And again, what's interesting about it is the highest national qualifying score for Clemson in any event came in bars in 49-4. That was 24th in the country. So now Clemson's going to head over to the beam, and Iowa State will head over to the floor. We'll step aside. We're now two rotations in. The scores continue to come in. These two teams dueled out to head to round two. Welcome back. Round one of the Florida Regional NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Stacey Gleim, I'm Kyle Crooks. We are now two rotations in. We'll get you those updated scores as they come in. Good finish to a tough bars routine for Clemson. Rebecca Wells 
Did a very good job in the anchor spot, waiting for his score right now. Clemson, or her score, as Clemson will head to Beam and Iowa State will head to the floor. Take a look at the scores. Becca Wells, 9775. So Caitlin de Guzman, the top scorer for Clemson at a 9 8. And take a look at Iowa State scores on Vault. No 9 9s quite yet. No, no one yet today. Um, that was a rough bars rotation for Clemson, not what they wanted. Clemson was leading going into the second event, and now they are trailing Iowa State. It is anybody's meet today. So the updated scores in the bottom right. Rotation three begins when you return here to Gainesville. Closing in on the start of rotation three. The score is after two rotations. Alongside Stacy Glime, I'm Kyle Brooks. All right, Stacy, the pressure only grows from here. Yeah, These two teams dueling to head to tomorrow. Now we go on to beam and floor. Uh, on beam, that is a make it or break it event. If you've got nerves, it's going to show on beam. So this is going to be... The next two are going to be great rotations here. Floor, you get to have fun. You get to really show off your personality uh, with your floor music. It's going to be a great ending. Iowa State on floor. Matternack, Cook, Wilk, Parker, Adams, and Bergstrom. Clemson on beam. Lippitt, Wells, McWright, Church, Cool, and Clark. Some fans have entered in a little bit late. Start time of too local here in Gainesville, so maybe some fans getting out of work early and enjoying some gymnastics. Expect this place to fill up tomorrow when the Gators are in action tomorrow night in session two. Extra words of assurance from Amy Smith. Lip at a season high of 9-9 on beam. We mentioned before the ACC Newcomer of the Year. She is a three-time USA national team member, so she is used to the pressure and is great in this leadoff position. Front layout, back swing down. You really want a strong first competitor to get you going on this event. Get your confidence going and build up from there. Side aerial, split jump, solid. She was initially committed to LSU before ending on Clemson. Still in purple. <laughs> Gainer front full off the end. It didn't quite get around the full at the end and had to switch her feet. The rest of the routine was beautiful. You mentioned the pressure of leadoff specifically on beam. Let's talk about that for our audience, just how much pressure goes into that leadoff spot on this apparatus. Yeah, I mean, this beam is only four inches wide, uh, any nerves and being off a little bit, you'll be off the event. Madeline Matternack now on floor for Iowa State here in rotation three in leadoff. She did not compete in 2023 due to injury, so great to see her back in this floor lineup. Also led off in this event at the Big 12 Championships. Front through to double back, high double back, beautiful finish. Showing personality is so key, right, Stacy? Yeah, the girls have a say, you know, in helping with pick their music and um, in the choreography of their routines. And you really try to get the music and the choreography to match the gymnasts so that they can really perform. Double pipe, nails it. Big smiles after that pass.
good leap combination. Little cross fingers at the end. Also, we're going to have a change on anchor for Iowa State. Ella Shell is now going to be in the lineup for Josie Bergstrom. So just keep that in the back of your mind for Iowa State. And now it's the steady Rebecca Wells. Turn, required element, performs it nicely. Great leap combination, very unique. That handspring layout, step out, solid like that confidence she ends her skills with. Just goes aggressive. Just the dismount, round off, double full. Perfect. That, that is what they are looking for in their senior. Stuck landing for Rebecca Wells. That handspring layout, step out, and just that quick finish. And that round off double twist. Just a slight motion of that foot. She is happy with that one. It's great to have these seniors who have already competed in a regional competition showing the freshmen of the team how it's done. We were talking to those around Clemson before the meet, and there's a good combination of competitors from other schools having this postseason experience and some of the newcomers. So there was a lot of excitement, but a lot of nerves at breakfast <laughs> this morning for Clemson. Back to the floor now, Laura Cook. Starts out with that front double full, great finish. Lots of spunk and energy. She is fun to watch. Her energy is infectious. Some breathers before this next pass. Round off one and a half, front layout. Solid last pass. She can do a front full out of that. Uh, they've toned it down to that front layout at the end to make it cleaner and make sure she gets that stuck landing. So, Laura Cooks fired up with her teammates. Here she is on that back one and a half front layout for all that energy at the end. Putting the sword away. There's another angle of that. She is a twister. Kyla McWright is a beam specialist. That handspring layout step out, Ooh, fights for it, stays on. She shows a lot of flexibility in this routine. Feet jump, tuck jump full, another balance check. Aerial, that 180 split jump. And a 
miss that gainer full off the side. Nails the landing. Had those two balance checks in the middle. Won't be the score she wanted, but stays on and finishes solid. So McWright, all ACC on beam. Every beam's lineup this year. A slight deduction. The balance checks. A good finish. And it's now Rachel Wilk, third performer on floor. Did not compete in 2023 due to her ankles. And now back in the lineup. This is a hard event on your ankles. They're taped up and she is ready to go. One and a half front layout, beautifully done. Just sets up for her last pass. Double pike. Nails that. Very clean routine. Now only having to do two passes to get all your requirements in for the floor exercise. Very clean routine. Should be a good score. East Rochester, New York. Perhaps some New York attitude at the end. Showing a lot of personality in that routine. Season high, 985 on floor. Has done that twice. Here's that one and a half front layout. Another gymnast that could do a front full out of that, but picking to go clean. And that final double pike gets those legs together. You're allowed to do that step out finish. That is not a deduction. It was controlled. Here's now Sierra Church. Lippitt leading off with a 9.725 and 9.9 from the steady Rebecca Wells on beam. Laura Cook, the top score on floor for the moment in a 9.8. Ninth consecutive beam lineup for Church. That can spring layout step out, just a slight balance check. Tried to work it into her dance. Another beam specialist. Aerial to wolf jump. Full turn. Again, just that dance out of the full turn. but Clemson's feeling the pressure on beam, knowing they need to hit this event to make up for bars. Round off one and a half twist. Jump forward and just those tiny slight little balance checks in the middle. Should be another good score. Meanwhile, we're getting told that they are making some score adjustments on bars for Clemson, to Guzman and Webb. So those scores adjusting just a little bit, and we'll get you those updated as we have them. Next, the There's that one and a half twist again. Just had to jump forward. Kaya Parker. She has been consistent all season on this event. Floor specialist for the Cyclones. First pass, front through to double back. Huge double back. Amazing finish.
she is really taking on a leadership role here in her season, in her senior season. And this routine has what it takes to score big. She scored two 9.925s this season. 9-9 nine, nine at the Big 12 Championships. Just this final pass. Ends with a double pike. Nails it. Love that head throw back. It's going to be another high score. And the exhale you get as a competitor when you nail that second pass through. She knew she was finished. She knew she was done with the routine, and she had nailed it. Here's that front through to huge double pike. So sky high. Great finish. Her ending pass, double pipe. Gets those hands up. Perhaps a 9-9 nine, nine plus, we'll see. Quinn Cool. Triple series, love it. Back hamstring, back hamstring, layout, step out. Don't see those often. Switch like beat jump, very nice. Toss, beat jump, solid so far. Round off, one and a half. Small hop forward, but the rest of that routine was gorgeous. Coach Amy is so excited about that one. That's what they needed. And a long gap from being in the beam lineup, entered back in in the ACC championships. There's that beautiful triple series, solid. Little low landing on that front toss, but connects it right to her big jump. And the dismount again. They're happy about that one. Noelle Adams. Did have a change to the anchor spot for Iowa State. Ella Shell is now and will be the six to go after Noel Adams for Iowa State. Noel owns this event. 9.9 .9 season high so far. Just floats through that first pass with ease. Just a freshman. And three Big 12 Newcomer of the Week awards for this freshman. Great leap combination. She just exudes confidence. Just that final pass. Double tuck. Nails it, big smiles. Puts on the crown. That should be a high score for Noel. Freshman delivers again. Here's a look at that front layout, one and a half, just floats through it. And that high double tuck, great finish. 
Stacy mentioned, she's had a 995 on floor. That's the highest for any performer in any event for Iowa State. Tied with Ella Shell will go next on floor. And here's Bree Clark in the anchor spot on beam. Just did a solid back handspring layout step out. Just very quick in her movements and confident. Good leaps, part of that team zero that only practiced last year in preparation for this year. They wanted to get their minds right, their cultures set for the team to be ready for their first season. Punch front, pull, small step back. She'll play a big role in rotation four on floor for Clemson if you take another look. Here's that punch front, that slight balance check. And there she goes again, right over to the side. And that punch full, good chest up, but that didn't need to put that foot back. Thought she had it. And now Ellis Shell to complete rotation three for the Cyclones, late addition. Josie Bergstrom initially was in the floor lineup. Well, Ella had a huge 995 against Florida here on this floor. So she's already competed here, seeing if she can do it again. Great first pass. There was a little flex toe in that leap jump. Every little deduction counts. Final pass. Oh, it, yep, there goes the flag. She stepped out of bounds on that one. So they will score her, and then they will take a one-tenth deduction for this step out after the score. So that late deduction will hurt for sure. Here's a look at the first pass. Finishes was ease there. That second pass, she just shoots forward a little too far and the foot goes right on that line. So third consecutive anchor performance for Shell on floor. We'll see what her score is. Top score on floor, Noelle Adams at a 9.875. Still waiting on Bree Clark's number. Rebecca Wells a 9.9. That's the highest score of any competitor in any event so far. It's the first 9.9 that we've had as we'll get set to head to rotation four and so much on the line, Stacy, coming into this final rotation, a chance to head to tomorrow, round two, keep the season alive. And we are only .15 yeah. apart. This is anybody's meet. They are all wanting it so bad to move on to tomorrow. Just one event left. You've got to pull it together for this last event and show everything that you have. So confidence is key. Seasons on the line. All of it when you return. Rotation four on the other side. After three rotations, just a difference of one-tenth of a point. Right now, Iowa State in front. Clemson, the higher-ranked team, entering here. Day one of the Florida Regional. Top score for Clemson on beam. Rebecca Wells, a 9-9 on floor. He had the little slippage out of bounds for Ella Shell in the anchor spot. Top score, Noel Adams, a 9-8-7-5. So it comes down to this, Stacy. You have Iowa State on beam and Clemson 
on floor. So much to look forward to. Again, seasons on the line here. Yeah, exciting meet so far. Just to be one-tenth, so close. That is just one point in tow, one small step. Every little thing counts when you're just tenths of a point there. And one final event to find out who is going to move on to tomorrow night. So we will decide it all when you come back. Rotation four is next. A point in differential heading to the fourth and final rotation. Will it be a program in its first year in existence in Clemson or the final team in to the regional field in Iowa State? Iowa State currently the small lead. Tiger fans trying to create some noise. It will be the Cyclones on beam. The Tigers on floor. Stacy Glime, seasons on the line right now. Excitement. How do you control those nerves? Well, Iowa State has to control it. They have the lead, and they're going to want to hang on to this lead, and they cannot let those nerves get ahead of them. Um, this is a great event for Clemson. They can score high. They had a 49-6 against North Carolina, and this is a very consistent event for them traditionally. It has been their best event all year, the 16th best national qualifying score. Iowa State, the 34th ranking on beam. Their highest coming at NC State was a 49-325. Hannah Loyam in the leadoff for the Cyclones. Lily Lippitt, the leadoff for Clemson. The Iowa State first to go. Looking for the final spot in session two tomorrow night alongside Florida, Missouri, and Georgia. Utah, Michigan State, Towson, and Maryland in the first session of tomorrow. Loyam from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey. Not too far from New York City. She took one last breath before hopping up. Iowa State's looking for this senior to get them started in this leadoff position. Switch, lead, switch side, solid. That handspring layout, step out, balance check, brings it back. Front aerial, very solid there. Setting up for the dismount. Gainer full, small hop. The small hop and bounce check, but a solid first performance for Iowa State to get their confidence going. Here's a look at that leap combination. Smile, that was a solid leap. But here's that balance check over to the side, brings it back. Got to fight for it. And the dismount. Good chest up, small hop back, refines her focus. Solid first routine. And now to one of the top freshmen in the ACC, Lily Lippitt. Is this the Pink Panther theme? Yeah. I like it. Yeah, she has fun with it. Double tuck, knees were glued together, good finish. Little sly moves. Leap combination, switch side over that 180 split. Beautiful flexibility.
She has a season high 9.925, so she has the possibility to score big in this leadoff position. Final pass, round off one and a half, front pull, great finish. Going to be a great score for Lily. That's one way to start it. A lot of personality. To begin on floor for Clemson. Runs back to her teammates, high fives all around. Here was that first pass. Glues those knees together on that double tuck. Great finish. That one and a half front full, great twisting finish. Lorno Brockta. Also a freshman. Season high, 9875 came at North Carolina State. She has a triple series. Back handspring layout, step out layout, step out. Gorgeous, love to see those. She is a beam specialist, so really wanting to highlight what she does best. She has great leaps, getting that 180 split. And that back pike off the end of the beam had to lean forward. The rest of it was flawless. How much of a, of a deduction for that little lean forward, Stacey? Well, she leaned forward and she had to hop on it. But there was that triple series. There's that little balance check, but love to see that difficult triple series. And here's that dismount goes forward, but still had her chest down, so had to jump forward. Pressure continues to mount. And it's now Molly Arnold's turn. It was a floor specialist, all ACC in this event. Individual competitor on floor. She starts off with a tucked pull in E-level difficulty, the highest difficulty you can do for a skill. And nails it. Just had that 995 at ACC's and hoping to match it or better. One of those transfers from Utah State. Two and a half twist, punch front. Oh, had to step back, just under rotated. Not what Molly was wanting on that last pass. Still fighting through to the finish. Well, wait, Molly Arnold scores, so Lippitt and Arnold have gone. Clemson down a tenth of a point, entering this fourth and final rotation. There was Molly's first pass, huge, just gorgeous, lots of power. But then this last pass just doesn't get that tuck all the way around, sending her backwards. Here's Rachel Wilk. Set a new career high, the Big 12 championship, 9-9, very consistent in this event. And did not compete in 2023, but has been a consistent force on this event. There's five meets in 2022, so not a whole lot of it. collegiate experience entering this year. She is solid so far.
dismount, round off, one and a half twist, small hop forward, but the rest of it was so solid. That's the routine they needed. Every detail matters here as we head towards the finish. That cat leap front toss, right to the back tuck. Great combination. And that dismount, just a little over. Just the smallest off. Big smiles. Now it's Lauren Rutherford on her birthday. Can she provide an exclamation point to her day? She has scored a 9.95 on this event, so she has what it takes to score big. Two and a half punch front, so solid. Looking at her teammates, giving the energy. Setting up for her final pass. High double tuck. Great landing. Way to come back after that fall on bars. Very strong routine for Lauren. See the total scores in the bottom right of your screen. We will have a lineup change for Iowa State. Very last minute, Noel Adams in for Logan Biswell in the fourth spot in the Cyclone Beam lineup. Take another look at Rutherford's pass through. There she goes with that high double tuck. So it's Noelle Adams. That cat's being like step out. Getting thrown back in the lineup. You have to be ready at any minute to take over for another teammate. There's a beam specialist, 9925 on this event against Southern Utah. Tremendous performance on floor earlier. Loving this confidence and her smiles that she is giving on beam. Cat leap, front aerial. She is so solid so far and her teammates are going crazy for this routine. Just that gainer full, absolutely sticks it. That is going to be a great store for Noel. And to step in last minute, her teammates are so happy for her. That might just be our best beam performance of the day. A late addition to the lineup. Here's that stuck landing again. Nails it. Freshman delivering in the most crucial moment. And see the emotion. And emotions running high now. The ultra steady Rebecca Wells, center stage. She is Clemson's first ever and only all around winner so far in program history. Starts out with that E level difficulty full in, a little short on the landing.
getting the Clemson crowd into her routine. Beautiful leaps, very high. Final pass, one and a half twist, through to double twist, love it. Gorgeous routine for Rebecca Wells. The stars delivering when they absolutely have to. So well, Adams, meanwhile, on beam. She had a 9-9 in that previous performance. We'll see what Rebecca Wells gets here on floor. Here's that full in first pass. Just didn't get it around, had to step forward. Then this beautiful last pass, so difficult to get that foot out and nails that one. Currently, Lauren Rutherford and Lily Lippitt, 9.825, the two best scorers for Clemson. Josie Bergstrom. Cat Leap, front toss right into a backhand spring. Great series. Her teammates in the background just yelling and fighting for everything for this team. They know it is within their reach. Beautiful split jump. Just the dismount left, punch tuck full, and <laughs> nails it, does not move, stuck landing. Her teammates are almost in tears over this. When the pressure is at its highest, we've seen some of the best performances on both sides. Just a gorgeous series there. And then this perfect dismount. Solid finish. Now it's up to Bree Clark. A little bit of a switch in the floor lineup. Clark originally was the anchor. Now we'll go fifth. Eve Jackson will be the anchor for Clemson. She is powerful on this event. Huge double layout. Getting the team going with some boys to men. Great leap combo there. Just this final pass, front layout, front full, front tuck, triple pass, little step backwards. Great finish for Brie Clark. Clark competing as an individual competitor on floor as well. Like you mentioned, so much power. So much power. Here's that double layout again. Great height. And then that final triple pass. Just a little scooch with her feet there. Well, Stacy, how about for Iowa State, back-to-back -back nine nines on beam. Wow. Adams and Bergstrom. Well-deserved on those routines. That was the roar you might have heard during Clark's floor routine was the celebration for the nine nine. Now, Lauren Thomas will anchor for Iowa State in their final performance of round one. Will they move on?
front toss. Right to her back handspring. Solid. Nice full turn. Like that unique start to that. Split quarter. Very nice splits. Just finishing with the dismount. One and a half twist. Little step back, but the rest of that routine was flawless. That was the final routine of their rotation, and it all comes down to this. Have they done enough? Pair of nine nines. And there's that dismount. Just lean back a little bit. Had to step, but so solid the rest of the routine. All right, here we go. It comes down to Eve Jackson. Final performer in round one as Iowa State awaits their fate. This first pass you don't see very often. She's gonna do a full out where she's doing the twist on the second flip. Does that very nicely. to double back. Just lifts that foot off the ground. Way to go for Eve Jackson. So our final performance. And now we await the scores. And that routine's not going to be enough for Clemson to close the gap. And Iowa State knows it. Iowa State starting to celebrate the last team in to the regional field. And it looks like they will move on to compete tomorrow in session two. What a performance from Ashley Miles Griggs' team. They really showed up on beam. In this final event that can make it or break it, they were so solid and fought so hard. And congrats to Iowa State. My heart goes out to Clemson that fought so hard all year long. And they have done big things this year and so much more to come from them. But congrats to Iowa State. Now on the flip side, just the first year for the Clemson program. And it looks like they're going to come up just a little short in this dual meet. And now Iowa State hopes to start what would be a three-day run Oof. here in Gainesville. It's a lot, it's a of, lot of gymnastics. gymnastics. <laughs> now they have to do the same or better tomorrow in that quad tomorrow night to try to be the top two in the evening session. First play-in since 2022 for Iowa State. They beat Western Michigan that year, and the cheers ensue for Iowa State. They're going to move on. And some of the disappointment for Clemson and just starting a brand new venture. Great performances from Amy Smith's team. But it will be Iowa State. Stacy, who's moving on, your overall thoughts and how everything played out here today. Great competition today. Good energy from both teams. You saw the nerves on different events. Um, unfortunately, I think it came down to bars for Clemson having to count that fall of why we're, you know, not moving on today. Iowa State heading over to the bracket. 
just to our left to pace their name as they are indeed moving on that fourth and final spot in session two. And you hear the cheers right by us. Florida, Missouri, Georgia, Iowa State will be the nightcap. Utah, Michigan State, Towson, and Maryland. All the coverage will be on ESPN Plus starting tomorrow at 1 Eastern. And then Friday at 7 Eastern will be the night session. The top two squads from the day and night session will head to the regional final. For Stacey Glime, Jeremy Otter, our entire SEC Network crew saying so long and good night. Iowa State moving on to round two.